If you open any sophomore organic chemistry textbook, you'll see an example similar to what I have on the screen. Typically, the textbook explanation will go into some details about the polarizability of the sulfur atom, or that uh, sulfur with the positive charge is more stable than oxygen, or something about the electronegativity of the sulfur atom versus the oxygen, or any combination of those statements. But then, we come across this comparison where we see that the sulfonium ion is significantly more acidic than oxonium ion, and the explanation is typically because the sulfonium ion is significantly less stable, therefore it's going to dissociate easier, making a stronger acid. So where is the truth? Is sulfur with the plus charge more stable than oxygen, or is it less stable? Now, I hope you are sitting because I'm going to say something that might feel like I just took a crazy pill, but both statements are in fact correct. The sulfonium ion in the first example, where we have this species, is more stable. And the sulfonium ion that I have in the second species over here is less stable. So how can we explain these two seemingly contradictory statements? Well, the trick here is in the molecular orbitals and the orbital overlaps. I'm not going to bore you with the gory details of the entire molecular orbital theory that goes into these types of explanations, but I'll give you the gist of it. Generally speaking, the closer the molecular or atomic orbitals are to each other in energy, the better the overlap going to be between them. And since the orbital's energy is directly proportional to its size, among other factors, Atoms that have drastically different radii do not make molecular orbitals with good molecular orbital overlaps. And while, of course, we cannot attribute the molecular orbital overlap and the bond energy to the orbital size alone, it certainly is a big factor. And the trend is especially apparent when you move across the group, when each atom becomes larger and larger as we move down the periodic table. So coming back to our examples here, we have one case when we are making a bond between the hydrogen and and much larger elements, and we have the other case where we are making a bond between carbon and the other larger atoms, but in comparison carbon is significantly larger than the hydrogen, so the overall size difference between, let's say, carbon and sulfur or carbon and oxygen is not going to be as drastic between uh, hydrogen and sulfur or oxygen and hydrogen. So when we are dealing with the bonds made by hydrogens and large atoms, like said sulfur for instance, most other factors dwarf in comparison to the poor orbital overlap that we see between hydrogen and sulfur. However, since carbon is much more comparable to sulfur, the orbital overlap here is not as big of a deal and as much of a determining factor as in the case with the hydrogen. So now we can see how because of the extremely poor orbital overlap, H3S plus is very unstable, however in comparison the sulfonium ion where we have bonds to carbon is significantly more stable now. Now is the explanation all always going to be so simple? Well, of course not. But as you learn more chemistry, you'll start seeing new connections that you might have not noticed before. Learning chemistry is a never-ending journey, so hopefully you're enjoying it so far, or at least making more sense of the information that you're learning in your class. Thank you for watching. If you've learned something new today, you can tell me that by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment below. Watch this video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy next, and I'll see you next time.